All right, so you're back live again. For those watching current time, we'll be on Twitch. Um, Loki continues to be very, very good. Not shocking because, again, everyone involved in that crew just seems to be very in sync at all mm -hmm. points at all times. Um, nothing can go good for them. Nope. <laughs> nothing whatsoever. Uh, yeah. So th this entire episode kind of boils down to they need to get everyone they don't like to work together. Basically. <laughs> so mo the part of this episode is trying to get Brad Wolf, Zaniac, who I had this looked up. Oh, where'd it go? Hold on. Mark. Zaniac, not Zaniac, Zaniac Marvel is the entity to later be known as Zaniac was a swarm of demonic parasite creatures that originated in the dark dimension. That's honestly a great reference there. Yeah, someone just went, what's a stupid title we could put on? Let's see. Google, insanely obscure characters we'll never use from Marvel. This is this is why I say the MCU still has gas in the tank. Mm -hmm. They do. They just need to pour the gas into the correct vehicle. Yeah. And you know, tune the vehicle every now and then, and make sure to change its oil and <laughs> do all those other necessary things. Not just make sure it has gas in it. <laughs> no, you got you gotta you gotta take care of of your vehicle. Yes. But uh, yeah, it, it's good. Uh, like I said, the great bulk of this is breaking Brad, and it was done very well. The cube and all the torture and all that of getting under each other's skin of very much everyone trying to accept the fact that now that they know that this is a big schmoz, that it is just a big schmoz. And nothing actually matters, and no one wants to be at the TVA anymore, other than the people that give a shit. We're finding out that's few and far between. <laughs> actually, who's left? Um, but yeah, and Sylvie just doesn't care anymore. Relatable. She's just no. I just want to work at McDonald's in the eighties. <laughs> her her motivation is honestly very valid like after everything that she's been through she just wants she just wants to start over live live an actual happy life mm -hmm. but of course we can't have that because uh the multiverse is in danger yeah and remember the conversation that we had and i asked wow something catastrophic and really bad must happen in the in-between through the, throughout this show because at the end, when everything's breaking down, there's only one timeline left. <laughs> right now, there's, I think, one other branch on that tree, according to that shark that didn't get decimated. Yeah, it, it's, it's either one or, like, maybe a, maybe a couple that are, like, on their left legs. Yeah. So it's essentially where it is at the end of the show just without the TVA exploding. <laughs> yep. Don't know how we get there. We know we need Miss Minutes because the one who remains is dead and for some reason in an emergency only he who remains who decided he never wanted to be found so kept himself at the end of time so no one ever knew he existed is the only person that could open a blast door in the emergency at the TVA. That seems like a gigantic design oversight, in my opinion. Oh, it definitely is. <laughs> what happens if it goes wrong? Ooh, they need my help, but I can't let them know I exist. It, it, it's, it's, ba it's basically an intentional design flaw, so that if anything goes wrong, he's like, nope, not my problem. Not my problem, yeah. I'll just let all of it go to shit, and I'll just sit in my little private room. <laughs> stare at my walls all day um yeah it it 
as much as there was a lot of info in this episode, it was a very straightforward, just we're going to tell you some stuff and not a whole lot else is going to go on. This this show more than the others actually feels like television. Mm-hmm. Like they, go ahead. Um, I I'm I'm getting the same sort of vibes of like Legend of Tomorrow or or Doctor Who, where it's like they have they have an overarching story. They know what like the mission is, but it's also a fun time traveling romp. It is, and they're they're much more succinct with everything that they tell you. They hand they, they handle their minutes <laughs> very well on this show. There's not a whole lot of fat, and I'm happy that the writers got the deal that they did. I am, and I'm happy that they're going to have showrunners throughout these shows. I am. I will tell you one thing. If the overhaul is as drastic as what I hear, and this is going to turn into like normal TV shows where there's 20 something episodes and unbelievably not needed filler episodes, I'm gonna start getting pissed. Hopefully these do, they these find- do not need to be 20 episode long jaunts every time. The fact that these are only eight episodes are why people are putting up with watching them. Hopefully they find they find that happy medium where like where I, th- I think I think the boys is probably a good example of yes. a streaming show that still feels like television, even though it's only eight episodes. Yeah, and there's a good reason because we found out that attention spans in this century are gone. They are. And also that is why everyone gave up on the Arrowverse. They need to remember that it was too much all the time. If each of those shows was always 12 episodes, that thing would still be going. Probably, yeah. We do not ever need these things to be this long ever again. Like, animes barely need 20 episodes sometimes. But that's because they do the most ridiculous shit humanly possible on purpose. Yep. But yeah, it's so it'll be interesting to see how after Echo and is there any other ones that are finished that I'm blanking on? I know Echo Echo is all is Oh, all uh Ironheart. Yes. And are do we still know if Armor Wars is even a thing? I know it got said it's being turned into a movie now. Um as of right now, it doesn't have its own Wikipedia article, so it's 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 probably put on ice because because of the strikes and everything. I get that, man. I just don't because didn't they say that Justin Hammer is going to be back? I I don't know if that was ever confirmed, but I I need that. I I, I need I it swore so badly. Someone said he was finally coming back, and I need Sam Rockwell back. He's too good of an actor to not get as much work as he's been barely getting it off yeah it's be interesting to see how um the hammer falls after all this and we should be getting back up pretty quick because now when the actual state of california is going no stop being greedy fuckwads and give them the deal they want they make you all our money when the actual labor laws are being thrown down on them because of how fucking stupid they're being yeah. I don't remember this in the last strikes we had with stuff. The fact that the test actual state of California is like, no, you go in the other room and talk to your sibling. Yeah. One, one, one last thing before we get back to Loki. It, it continues to frustrate me that, you know, the writers got their deal and that's, and that's great, but I'm, very disappointed that Hollywood is try trying to do the same scare tactics to the actors when we know when they just buckled with the writers. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, no, it's gonna work on you guys, the ones that out of the two get better pay. 
You have a support system that will share and have shown that they will help you to ride this out. You're the ones we're going to try and scare more than the writers. And SAG is also the largest of of these unions, so it's even it's even sillier that they think this is going to work. And also, I don't remember what that bill being pe- like at what level that bill for the um uh what I want to say the the, an- uh, the anti fake law the anti fake law. Did you see that clip going on around Twitter? I saw it, y'all. I don't know if you can see this. Look at those monsters. That's what they want to turn background characters into. Mm. That is nightmare fuel. Look at that. That is, and that's a Disney Plus show. I think that. I I remind you. I think that was a Disney Plus movie. Hold on, hold on. Okay, you want to know what? I'm going to do the math again, just because I'm an asshole. How many sub? Subscribers, does Disney Plus have? They have a hundred and forty-six point seven million subscribers. Multiply that by, I think. What's the lowest now? tier you can pay? The oh, the ad, the ad tier. Yeah, I think that's like seven ninety-nine. Okay. Okay, so y'all, y'all are seeing this. This is a. 146,700,000 times seven. This is every month, guys. We can't pay fucking background actors! Are you kidding me right now, Disney? You make a trillion fucking dollars a month! That's if everyone's paying for the lower tier. That doesn't include Hulu and ESPN. I'll tell you right now, I don't have the lowest tier. Most people don't. How are we at this level of greed? And all you need to do is pay them the pennies you have stuck in your couch cushions to continue to make this asinine amount of money that is still incomprehensibly more than what they should be getting fairly paid. They're not even asking you for that. All they're asking for is 2%. 2 fucking percent. They should get like 20, (laughs) but they're asking for two. And, And yet they think that's unreasonable. And yet, I just showed you the nightmare fuel monsters that are in high production Disney Plus shows, not hidden away so that people can't see them. No, it's in, it's in plain sight. In plain sight of a center hard cam shot in a in a show. They want to scan people, and there's reports of people just being rushed through contracts and signing themselves away, not knowing what they're even doing, just getting onto sets. Uh, and it's like you just had in cyberpunk this dlc that just came out phantom liberty there is an unbelievably important character that barely gets any screen any screen time in the grand scheme of things called vic he's a ripper doc that installs you with all your cyberware and he's a guy that has known the main character v for a long time and looks at looks at he or her like his kid this young kid he brought up and cares for him they just released this DLC. He died in 2021. I didn't know why, but he passed away sadly. He was a great voice actor. He did an amazing job. And he wanted to put this DLC out. They, and I kid you not, for five minutes of usage and maybe 20 lines. Maybe. And oh boy, I couldn't have told you that there was a difference. Could not have at all told you that that wasn't him. Went to his family, asked them if they could use it, and to my knowledge, from what I read, promised that after, like, legally promised them that it would never be touched again. 
for 20 minutes of lines. Maybe. I kid you not, he's in that DLC for 20 minutes. And 70% of it is the other character talking and him just responding. That can be done nicely. We can't. Y'all saw that. I'm still looking at it on my phone. It's a trillion dollars. No, I'm sorry. I said that wrong. That's a billion. billion. I'm I'm wrong. I said billion. I freaked out far too much. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I. Why? Why? It's Avengers Endgame every month. Are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? Anyway, getting back, getting back to Loki. <sighs> I want to give a shout out to the actor um, who plays Hunter, Hunter X5. That's um, Raphael Cassell. Mm-hmm. He, he's, he's great. And yeah. something I kind of like about this episode is it almost kind of, it almost kind of acts as a mirror to the interrogation scenes from like the first Avengers mm-hmm. and Hunter X5 is kind of, he's, he's kind of the Loki in, in, these scenes you know it's be, being all manipulative getting in their heads and it is yeah. kind of nice seeing loki kind of he he he's not going to be a villain again but it feels like he's sort of leaning into his old ways but using them for good mm-hmm. yeah speaking of actors i don't remember who plays sylvie but um she's really good just Amazing, beautiful human being, very talented. It didn't hit me until I saw her with a regular hairstyle at all. And this was really weird to me that it hit me like a brick wall, especially right at the end when they're in the TVA. You see her here? Yeah. Looking great. Does she remind you of anybody? She kind of looks a little bit like Christina Applegate. Oh. Go back. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, it kind of, there's certain scenes. I couldn't find the accurate exact scene I wanted of the haircut I was thinking of in the last season of Stranger Things. Yeah, it, it's there a little bit. <laughs> I see it. Yeah. Applegate's there too, but yeah, that was but yeah, she's really good. I'm excited now that she's more involved because she was my favorite part of the last season. So uh yeah, uh I'm excited to see where the show is going. Like that also the, a show I appreciate that a show does um makes really good use of making characters very important and never showing them on screen or even needing to give them screen time, like with mm-hmm. Renslayer and Miss Minutes. Yeah, they're they're doing a lot of really good things with the show, and I appreciate that. Again, it it feels it feels the most like TV compared to oh, the other does. shows. Absolutely, it feels the most tightly knit. And I, I I hope, I mean, granted, I don't want them to just continue the show just for the sake of continuing it, but no. But if any show, if any show was like built to be ongoing, it is this one. It is absolutely because again, you can make large strides in a show for a whole season and realistically not have a whole lot happen. Because once they fix the problem, no one else is affected. They were just doing stuff in the background. It is very much the Wizard of Oz of TV shows where they're just like, as long as we don't screw up, no one else is going to (laughs) notice. Because guess what? Loki season one came out and it was never referenced in anything else. It never affected anything else. Why? Because no one knew what was happening. (laughs) Yeah, because the TVA is like... Other than the Kang variants coming... But no one knows that it was their fault. <laughs> True. <laughs> well, we'll we'll see we'll see once uh, once King Dynasty comes around. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if like you actually get to see Sylvie and Loki like 
interacting with get to play with the 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 normal family again. <laughs> yeah, that'll be interesting. Because Loki has been very much relegated to the I'm the Disney Plus character now, which I'm not against because again, he does really good at his job. Tom Hiddleston's a really good actor. And you get to show a lot more range, and he's he's had more screen time in just like these few seasons of Loki than he has almost combined in every movie he's been in. Almost. Because he's the main character. And they're good length shows, so he's got a lot more time to flex his chops. So, yeah. It's really good. Continues to be really good. Always will be really good. I don't see them having a bad episode. I can't remember a single episode or, like, thing about last season that I didn't like. Me neither. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um, last thing I'll say um, before we get into maybe sort of predictions... This is this is only one of two episodes that were not directed by um, Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead. This is directed by uh, Dan uh, Deliu. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's 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 just a, it's just a really good episode, and I just I just really like where the where the show is going. Oh, I do too. And we're a third of the way through it already. That's insane. <laughs> like, I'll be playing Spider-Man. Like, we're doing this a Saturday after the episode came out. I will be playing Spider-Man when, like, the last ep the se the third to last episode's coming out. <laughs> like, I had vacation plans planned when it started. That's insane to me how, like, just fast he shoot by, which is, again, why I want writers to get work but I don't want it to mandate that they have to write filler crap for a show just because of that. Use that opportunity that you have to give these writers to do things, multiple projects, and make all the crap you want to be on Disney Plus worth watching because you have actual teams behind them. Yes. Spread the workload. Ultimately, treating these writers with with respect both with time and money is going to result in better stuff it is you want to know what you should do you should keep the episodes this length and then give the writers the freedom to make holiday specials yes <laughs> like werewolf by night and the guardians christmas special make more crap like that where they can actually be like yo i had an idea now that you're like by contract forced to care about us again <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah. We'll get there. We'll get there slowly but surely. Yeah, I, I I would like to see the actors get get their deal by at the very least the end of the year, but it would be nice if they had if they got it by the end of the month. I think that they'll have it by the end of next month. Now that the fact that, like I said, there's actual Californian labor society and like lawmakers cracking the freaking whip at them. California needs to make money to run. Guess what makes the most of their money? I don't think I need to give you guys a whole lot of guesses. You can get 15 and they all rhyme with movies. <laughs> that and all the other guilds are like, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're standing behind the actors. Give exactly. them what they want. We're going to help them. It's like, why does literally the entire family need to tell you to stop being mean to the one cousin? Like, and the one that, ma again, makes you all of your money. It's like kicking out your tenants and then being pissed when no one's in the apartment. Like, why don't you want to live here? I know we kicked you out and locked the door, but why don't you want to live here? Ridiculous. So what if we're not turning the heaters on in the middle of January? What's the deal with that? <laughs> what do you mean you actually want to eat while you live here? What's wrong with you? Why do you want to have basic human rights? I mean, you're just being greedy. Not us who make a billion dollars a weekend 
just by existing or a month just by existing because you know whatever <laughs> stupid all right mike where can everybody find you you guys can find me on various social media at captain k42 you can check out my quick thoughts on letterbox.com slash coach k42 and you can follow renegade pop culture on facebook and that place at ren pop culture you can also find us on youtube on pod chaser Subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash renegade pop culture. Listen to all of our podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen. And last but not least, everything can be found at renegadepopculture.com. In escape, so do we. Absolutely. And you can find me everywhere at Organoid Zero, mainly on Twitch, YouTube, and also the social media platform formerly known as Twitter. Speaking of Twitch, and speaking of Marvel, and speaking of Spider Man that I mentioned earlier, in six days. <laughs> I will be live streaming, well, technically, 5 and 90% because it drops at 11 p.m. my time, according to when that thing goes off. I will be live streaming Marvel Spider-Man 2. Anyone who is interested in the game, go to that live stream. And if you're a subscriber and you're watching, you will be entered into a raffle to win a digital deluxe copy of the game. Depending on what shipping is, it might take me a little bit because you'll be getting all the digital deluxe goodies from my pre-order that I got of the physical edition. So you'll be getting everything. It'll just be the next day. I will tweet you or, or direct message you or however what you want the contact. The stuff, if you win, all you need to be doing is watching and be subscribed. $5 to win something that's worth 80 I think that's a pretty good deal. All right. Until next time, we'll see you all later. Bye. Peace.